If you have decided winter wheat fits well into your crop rotation and business plan, you will begin to prepare your ground for winter wheat planting. In doing so, you must first take into consideration the nutritional requirements of winter wheat and what your soil can offer. As with all crops, soil testing is an essential element in growing a productive and profitable crop of wheat. A soil test is critical to assessing what capabilities your soil has and what you will need to amend. Without a soil test, you may be missing yield opportunities by under-fertilizing your crop or you may over-fertilize the crop, wasting money, potentially causing issues in your cropping system, and eating up profits. Fertilize your ground according to your soil test recommendations using your local university's guidelines. On a Penn State soil report, the lime and fertilizer recommendations can be found in the middle section of the report for the crops you provide. Did you know winter kill can be more severe if pH of the soil is below 6 and our phosphate availability is low? Up to 20 pounds of nitrogen and all the phosphorus and potassium may be broadcast prior to planting or a portion applied with the drill and the remainder broadcast. To reduce the likelihood of fertilizer burn, do not apply more than 15 pounds of nitrogen or 30 pounds of nitrogen plus potash per acre in the row with the seed. Because of the potential for lodging, it is very important to take the full credit for manure and residual N from previous manure applications for small grains. If plants did not tiller well in the fall, top dress nitrogen at green up in early spring. University studies show that applications made prior to green up do not result in any yield benefit compared to a slightly later application. Wheat does not require large amounts of N until stem elongation. Feeks grow stage 6. Therefore, top dress should occur any time up until growth stage 5. Split N applications at green up and growth stage 5 to 6 could help reduce the potential for lodging and N loss in a wet spring. This practice is particularly useful in fields with a high yield potential and high end recommendation that exhibit good tiller development come spring. In most cases, splitting end applications does not provide a significant practical advantage. Prior to top dressing, consider the soil conditions. Think through ways to decrease effects of traffic on the field during potentially wet spring conditions. When top dressing winter grains, consider the potential for volatilization and loss of end fertilizer particularly those sourced from UAN and urea. To minimize loss, try to apply UAN or urea prior to a half inch soaking rain. Some growers have chosen to intercrop a cover crop of radishes in their planting of winter wheat with the idea that the fast growing radishes will scavenge nutrients the wheat cannot otherwise reach and release in late winter for the wheat. Likewise, many producers have had success frost seeding a relay crop of clover into wheat. More research on the benefits and risks of these practices are being conducted and will be needed before further fertility recommendations can be made in conjunction with their use. More information about growing wheat for grain can be found in the Penn State Agronomy Guide or visit the Penn State Crops and Soils website to find an expert who can help you.